gives of power, the working gifts. That, that is faith, that is the gift of healing, and the gift of miracles. Faith, healing, and miracles. Tonight we're going to continue dealing with the faith. We need to understand that uh, the faith that I'm talking about is a supernatural ability to believe God without human doubt, unbelief, or reasoning. That's what we need to understand tonight. That God does not want us thinking with our human way of thinking. We have to think in the Spirit. We have to think spiritually. We have to, we have to think supernaturally. If we want a blessing from God, we've got to walk in the Spirit. We've got to live in the Spirit. That means have a regular communication with God. I try not to let 30 minutes of a day go by without having communication with God. Every so many minutes, I want to have a talk with Jesus. And you can do that. You don't have to get down on your knees. You don't have to, you don't have, to have a, a full-blown prayer meeting. But within yourself, an intimate relationship with God that when you're walking down the road or you're driving down the road, you're going down the road, it's just you and God. You ever been there? Yeah. It's you and God. And, uh, and God wants it. That's the way God wants it. Now, uh, to work in this uh, gift of faith, we've got to understand that we cannot walk seed of doubt or unbelief or reasoning in their mind. You know, a lot of people want to reason, uh, they want to reason God out of what God's trying to do. Somebody says, well, I went to the doctor, they said I had cancer, and I went back and, and they said I didn't have cancer. And, well, maybe they got it wrong. You know, they try to reason God out of it. Well, maybe, maybe, you know, this or that. Or they just try to reason God out of what God's doing. Always give God glory. It's like this week, every day, I got up Monday morning and, and uh, my van wouldn't start. And, and, and first of all, I said, that, mm, mm, mm. that made me so mad. I first said, that piece of junk. Then I got to thinking about Brother Green. He said, God, don't give junk. I said, Lord, forgive me. I know you don't give junk, but something happened here. This thing ain't starting. Anyway, I had to drive a man's uh, Camaro, and, and um, that was some kind of experience. And I, was going down, <laughs> I was going down the road, and I looked over to Kenny, and uh, I mean, I looked over to Hannah, and I said, I'm going to do like Abraham. I'm going to praise God anyway. When, when Abraham, year after year after year, he didn't, uh, he couldn't see his promised seed, but he, he, he didn't see it with his eyes. And he gave praise to God anyway. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what we got to do is we got to keep giving praise to God. To get our prayers answered, we need to understand that He is present. Uh, we're in the presence of, of God. We're in the presence of God. And we need to understand that we have, we have to have uh, in the presence of God. And we got to have the idea of His power and authority and respect. God wants us to understand that when we walk and we reside in Him, that He wants us to have the understanding of Him. He says, "You gotta, you gotta believe in me. You gotta know that I am that I am. You gotta know that my power is not in the thing, in the thinking or the pattern of man, but it's in the pattern of myself, my thought." You, you know, so many times we put God in the box and we think God's going to do it this way or that way. You know, I'm thinking about the rapture, thinking about one night I'm going to go to bed or one morning I'm going to get up or sometime during the sleep. Then one of these days we're just going to be snatched out of here. I don't know if God's going to give us a few minutes and let us just whoosh and let us see everybody go out. But I, I do know He said it's going to be so quick and a, a twinkling of an eye. And that's not a blinking of an eye. That's a twinkling of an eye. You ever just sit there and the eye just twinkle? And just the twinkle of an eye, you're going to be disappearing. And your body is going to be gone and your clothes are still going to be there and it ain't going to realize your, your body is gone. It's
it just going to stay there for a few minutes. That's amazing. Man. Now how, how can we understand that? How can you understand that? But, but God says He's going to do it, so I believe He's going to do it, and I'm not going to doubt Him. I'm not going to have my belief, and I'm not going to reason it out. I believe that Jesus is coming. I'm looking for Him, but, but, but right now, uh, while I'm living on earth, while God's got me here, doing what He's got me doing, I want to understand how I can get my prayers answered, how I can walk in authority and believe God. And God says, all you got to do is let faith be born in you and understand that my presence, that my presence will cause you to have faith and, and my ideas of power will, uh, will cause you to have the authority and the respect that you're supposed to have. But uh, uh, tonight, I want to say to you that uh, there's seven things that we need to understand to get our prayers answered. Number one is to ask. Now, I didn't get on this uh, Sunday morning, but I want you to, uh, I started here, but I didn't get to finish it. we got to ask God. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Some people say, well, I've sat home all day, all week long, and, and I don't have nothing to eat, and, and I'm just sitting there, and I've done without, and, and nobody's come and checked on me. Well, you know what? If God has given you two legs and give you the ability to get up, He's given you a mouth to ask. He's given you a mind to think with. And if you sit at home all week with nothing to eat, it's your own fault because uh, Sister Mercedes is ready to feed anybody. Come on. And uh, But there's so many people today that they're, they're not getting what they need from God because they're not asking. They're not asking. They're just, they're just sitting there and they're waiting on somebody to come and answer their prayer for them. Sometimes God just wants us to get up and pray. Sometimes share with a friend. Maybe that friend will bless you. Or maybe that friend will share with somebody else and somebody else will bless you. But I guarantee you that God's going to bless you through somebody if you'll get up and do what He's asked you to do. He wants us to ask and you shall receive. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So the Lord wants us to ask. The Bible says in, in James chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, not man, but God. Let him ask of God that give to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. He says, But let him ask in faith. No, uh, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea and driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we find in the book of James that the Lord is telling us to ask. He wants us to ask. He said, ask God that give to all men liberally. So if you want something from God, church, you got to ask of God that is, that is able to give you what you need. And some people say, well, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking, and it just don't seem like that it's here yet. Let me tell you something. God is going to use somebody to bless you that you, uh, a lot of times, your miracle you already have. A lot of times you already have your miracle. Some people don't realize this. But God has already put people in your path to give you your miracle. He's already put things in your house to give you your miracle. If you need something, you need to get down and you need to pray and say, Lord, show me how to get this particular thing that I'm praying for. Well, God has somebody in your path or something in your house to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. I remember one time that I had a financial need and I needed God to come through for me at my other church. And, um, and one of my church members found out about it and, uh, and she came and asked me about it. And you know what God done? I didn't even ask her for it, but she came and she blessed me anyway. She came and blessed me. And she took care of my financial need. What I'm trying to tell you, church,
church. If you want God to bless you, you got to let God work in the way that He wants to work. You can't work it for God. You can't get in God's way and work it out yourself. So many people, if you don't watch it, and sometimes I've been guilty of it, I said, Lord, if I'm in your way, forgive me and get me out of your way. Let me do this thing right. Church, we need to get out of the way of God and let God do what He wants to do in our lives. Now, if you're going through some kind of difficulty in your life, it's because God wants to teach you something. It's because God wants to take you to the next level. And I want to tell you something. God will send people in your life to see what you'll do. God will send somebody in your life just to see how you will react. And if you pass the test, God will bring you all out of what you're going through. But what I'm trying to tell you tonight, church, is we've got to ask, and we've got to ask believing with prayer. Number two, prayer and fasting. We've got to pray and fast. And I know this seems so elementary to some of you. Some of you think that this is so elementary. Well, you know what? Some of you ain't getting your prayers answered. So some, somehow or another, you ain't asking this right. In the middle of your ask, listen to what God's saying. God's saying, if you want something from me, if you want something from heaven, you've got to ask me. You've got to believe in me. You've got to fast and you've got to pray. And there's so many people today, they're trying to cast out devils. They're trying to get their family delivered. They're trying to do this and do that. And they're, they're wondering, uh, they're numb. It's not they're numb. They don't know which way it's coming, which way it's going. And they're numb. They don't know how to get this thing done. Let me tell you something. God will send somebody in your life to get your family delivered. God will send somebody. Oh, do you know that somebody's already, that you know, that's in your life, that, that's ready to deliver your family? Or there's somebody already ready to deliver you financially? Or there's somebody ready to help you get to that next level? And let me tell you something. When you go from level to level, you better bet your boots that you've got to find, you've got to pray, Oh, 
For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Somebody underline that. So in the book of James, he says, Ask God. If you lack wisdom, ask God. In the book of Matthew, he says, This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. If we want to see a great move of God in the Smyrna Church of God, Oh, God. 
do it or not. Anybody ever done that? Huh? Not me. I believe. I believe when I pray for you, I believe. Even if you come back to me with a bad report, I still believe. Because the Bible says with his Christ, we are healed. The Bible says we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Bible tells me to preach it. He didn't ask for me to question it. He didn't ask for me to wonder. He said pray, believe, know that I'm going to come through for you. Let me take you something, church. Every time I pray, I believe that God's going to come through for me. And that's why every time I pray, it may come.
and see if God don't show up. I went in that, I went in that room, and here's all I done. I laid my hand on his forehead. He was dead in the board, Bob. I laid my hand on his forehead, and then people were looking at me. I didn't know what to pray. I was afraid I was going to speak in tongues. I was afraid I was going to get uncivil in that place. God is my witness. I laid that right hand on his forehead. When I laid my hand on his forehead, it was cold. It was desolate. It was dead. There was no life there. But I said, oh my God, hear me this night that your people may know that there's a God in heaven. And as soon as I said that, the thing, the heart monitor began to start beeping again. Chapter 21. I know I'm taking up a lot of time, but Matthew chapter 21. 
the water. In verse 18, he says that. In verse 18, and now in the morning as they returned into the city, he, he hungered. And when he saw the fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing there but leaves only. He found nothing there on but leaves only. And it's sad to say, a lot of times when Jesus, when the Lord checks your fruit out, you look good on the outside, but underneath the fig leaf, there's nothing. Have you ever seen a big tree? Go to big, 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 big leaves. And the figs normally grow underneath the leaves. They cover the leaves. I mean, the leaves cover the thing. And when you, you pick up the leaf, you can see whether it has fruit or not. When God picks up your leaf, what is He seeing? Is He seeing asking? Is He seeing faith? Is He seeing fruit? Thank you, Lord. Is He seeing something in your life? If He's not, you better be careful. Because the Bible says he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon the fig tree withered away. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, if you have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the big tree, but also if ye shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done, and all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, the book of James says ask the book of Matthew says fast and pray it says pray believing <coughs> if you'll listen to what I'm saying tonight you're going to see a great transformation take place in your life, in your home's life, in your friends' life, in the lives of people that's around you. Because you are a child of God working in the gift of faith, asking. You're working in the gift of faith, fasting and believing. Not knowing how God's going to do, but you know He's going to. You begin to pray, believing. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you get to the place that you're praying, believing, you can go to Mark chapter 9, verse 23, and you can find out what the Bible says. The Bible says, all things are possible to them that believe us. If you need something moved out of your way, you gotta get to the place that you're asking. You gotta get to the place that you're fasting. You gotta get to the place that you're praying and believing. And when you get to that place, hallelujah, that you're praying and believing, then comes the manifestation of God. Then comes God on the scene saying, All things are possible to them that believe. Let me tell you something today, church. If you're in Oh, God wants you. If you're in a place that God wants you, I want you to know that God will take you to the level of the level if you'll just ask Him. God will move in your life if you'll ask Him. God will give you what you're praying for if you'll ask Him. Oh, but you got to pray believing. you got to pray believing. The Bible says in verse 23, And Jesus said unto him, This is for people that are numb tonight. Are 
Are you numb? Are you numb? Here it is. The Bible says that straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Help me, God. There's a part of me that believes, but there's a part of me that's holding me back. And the Bible says when Jesus saw the people coming and running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. That means that whatever devil that was, it was coming out. Somebody's 
willing to work in the gift of faith. And God knows there's a lot of people just like me. Some of you are just like me. Some of you are trying to get there. And you will. You hang around me, you're going to be a faith preacher. I'm going to show you how God can do it. Just hang in there with me. Hallelujah. Well, have you speaking in tongues and everything else? Come on now. All things are possible. He says he rebuked the foul down in that spirit. And the Bible says that the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead. Insomuch as many said, He is dead. And Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And he was and he came into the house. His disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind go, this kind come forth by nothing but prayer and by fasting. You gotta pray and fast. You ever wondered why some people's ministry just don't ever get out of there? Off the ground. You ever wonder why people's ministry don't go no further? It's because they're shallow with faith. They're shallow. You can do nothing for God without making a move first. Church, I'm trying to stop, but I'm trying to talk to somebody. If you want God to move for you, you got to move first. God didn't deliver the children of uh, Israel. He didn't deliver the children out of Egypt until a man of God moved first. Moses had to move first. We got to move first. Church, if we want God to come through for us in the spirit of church of God, we got to move first. We got to do what God says. We got to have faith in God. That's number, that's number five. Faith in God. Aren't you glad? I mean, I've got two more to go. Ask. Number one. Number two, praying and fasting. Number three, praying and believing. Number four, all things are possible. Number five, have faith in God. Have faith in God, dear saints. Have faith in God. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For very I say unto you that whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and it and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he hath said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever ye desire, when ye pray, believe, and ye shall receive them, and ye shall have them. Wow. He said, if you work in the gift of faith, he said, you can get to the place that you can, uh, and you don't doubt in your heart, and you believe God. He said, you can get to the place that whatever you say shall come to pass. Whatever you desire shall come to pass. Oh, you shall have them. God, He desires for you to have them. The Bible says that when you stand praying, forgive if you have fought against any. It's amazing how it sounds like He changes the subject, but He don't change the subject. He tells you if you want to get to this point in life, you cannot have anything in your heart to get in your way. God does not want anything to get in your way. So He says, I'll give you this. So He says, have faith in God. And quickly, let's go to Hebrews. And quickly, Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. 
Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 we, we got to have faith that he is you got to that's the important part out of the scripture he is somebody say he is he is what he is our God he is our healer he is our desire he is our deliverer he is the one that gives us whatsoever we need. You know why he says that? He says, because of your will become my will. That's the same thing. Your will has got to become God's will. When your will becomes his will, then you begin to understand that he is. In Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Somebody understand that? That he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That means if you diligently seek God. What are you seeking, Lord? Who are you? Says, as many as I love, in Revelation 3 and 19, as many as I love. 
love and rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore. Repent. Behold, I stand in the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes, will I grant? Will I give permission? Will I grant to, to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am sitting down with my Father in His throne? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. The Lord said, if you'll do it my way and quit trying to do it your way, He said, I'll pay off that vehicle. He said, I'll give you homes that you didn't build. He said, I'll heal your body. He said, I'll make I'm going to shut that 